Caper films. I love them. You love them. We meet the group of guys. They discuss the plan. And they hit the safe with everything they've got. Hopefully, getting away with the loot. Recent examples of these types of films are Ocean's Eleven, Heat, and even Inception. But they had to start somewhere. This film, along with 1955's Rafifi, are two of the best examples. And today, we will discuss John Huston's 1950 classic, The Asphalt Jungle. To all you out of work soda jerks without a penny to pinch, to the detectives with all the answers, to the dastardly dames who play men like baby dolls, and the trusted ones too pure for this world. And all you double-crossing, backstabbing, ruthless, baby-faced amateurs, this one's for you. So suit up, turn out the lights, put the match to your smokes, and sit back for the darker side of things. Cine Shadow Moonlights, Noir Vimbo. The film opens in the big city, baby. Desolate diners and empty streets. The cops, they're on patrol. A lone man walks among massive pillars. He's obviously trying to dodge the coppers. He makes it to Gus's diner and hands him a gun to hide. We find out his name is Dix Handley, played by Sterling Hayden. The cops come in, bust him, and we get a great lineup scene. Dix looks hard. He's been arrested several times. He's a hoodlum. But in the end, he can't be identified. Detective Dietrich wants him, but can never make it stick. But that's just one of the men on the eventual team. This is a caper film, after all. So let me introduce some of the other players. Doc Reidenschneider, played by Sam Jaffe. Just getting released from prison for a seven-year bid, he's the mastermind behind the robbery, and he does not want to go back to jail. Instead, he wants fun in the sun down in Mexico. I'll have nothing to do all day but to chase them around in the sun. Those Mexican beauties. Alonzo Emmerich, he's the money man. They need 50 grand to get started, and he should have it, but he doesn't. He's been running around with Marilyn Monroe and being extravagant with her. And I don't really blame him. She is quite the looker. His wife is dying and he plans on swindling the lot from the guys. What a double-crossing piece of crap. Gus Manissi. He's the driver and owner of the diner. Gus can be relied upon and has never failed on his duty. He is a good man. Louis Chiavelli. The box man. The safe cracker. He's been out of the game for a while, raising a family. He's one of the best, and above all else, he can be trusted. And that's the key in this business. Trust. He needs the dough. Then, there's Cobby. He's the one who actually puts up the money to get him started. He wants to be like Emmerich, but he's a small-time bookmaker. And he isn't respected at all. He's a rat, and he has the features of one. Dix is a prideful man. He dreams of his black colt and the family farm that they lost. He's going to get it back. He also has a relationship with Dahl, a club worker, and a woman who loves him very dearly. Dix, he's the hooligan in the caper, a hard hitter who won't panic. The caper itself... It's a jewelry heist. The planning scene has moody lighting, with the only light coming from the hanging lamp. Shadows are cast everywhere. It's great. The caper is done in real time, showing every detail. They hammer through a brick wall to deactivate the door alarms, crawl under a motion sensor, and blow the safe with nitroglyceride, the soup, as they call it. This sets off a general block radius alarm, but they don't panic. They get the jewels and knock out a doorman, but Louie, he gets shot in the process. They get away, but with some new problems to solve. Some die, 
Some get caught, and some, they go out on the lam. Watch it to find out who. In conclusion, like they say, crime doesn't pay. You usually get caught, so was the ride really worth it? This one was. Sam Jaffe is wonderful in this. My favorite character. There is a scene at the end that is ironic and devastating. It breaks my heart every time I see it. Jaffe could do it all. He's a mental deficient in the Scarlet Empress, fights with a thuggy cult with Cary Grant and Gunga Den, and he's a world-saving professor in The Day the Earth Stood Still. What range, what class, and what a funny-looking face. (laughs) 